2 Corinthians 7, verse 10, where we're starting out this morning. And I think, I'd, I think I'll be able to manage staying through the whole Sunday school today. I think I'm in good shape. Verse 10, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Behold, behold this selfsame thing that you sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge. In all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. Isn't it good to get yourself clear? Amen? It's good to have not stuff, have, don't have stuff hanging over your head. They have these programs up in St. Louis. Uh, turn to Genesis 6 while I'm talking. They have these programs up in St. Louis where every now and then they'll offer it like a, a day where everybody can go and clear themselves of warrants. You know, all these misdemeanor warrants, traffic warrants, things like that. Uh, the small stuff that bogs the courts down and people aren't going to show up anyway. And so they offer everybody, I think it's an amnesty. They said amnesty day. Everybody can show up and get all their warrants cleared, pay the fines, get all the warrants cleared, and get them out of the way. And that way, they're over and done with. The fine's been paid, and everything is settled. And, uh, but it's good to get everything clear. It's good to get stuff off your mind, off your heart, off your conscience. And that's what repentance does. It clears you. It wipes away. God wipes away the sorrow. Well, how can I say this? He'll put godly sorrow on you, and he'll bring you to repentance, and then he'll clear you and say, it's over with. It's done. And the Bible teaches us that when, when God is done with something, he's done with it. It's over. He does not bring back on you the thing that you did. He's not waiting for some time in the future to just reach out and grab you and destroy you. And that's, that's what that clearing is all about. But then he mentions, uh, yea, what revenge. And after the sin is cleared, God gives you a zeal in your heart to not want that back in your life. You want revenge over the devil who brought that on to begin with. Can I hear you say amen? God's going to give that to you. Turn to, I told you to hold, hold your place in Genesis, and I'm going to show you this. Romans 16. Romans chapter 16. He says in, um, oh, let's see here, where is it? Uh, May the God of heaven bruise Satan under your feet shortly. I'm probably looking right at it and can't see it. Somebody help me out here. Romans 16, verse... Yeah, verse 20. The God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. What that means is... Anything under your feet, that means you have dominion over it. You're the one in charge now. And may the God of heaven bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The promise made in Genesis 3.15 was there, was there were certain things that God laid out after man had sinned, after the devil had tempted everybody. And he says to the serpent, the seed of the woman is going to bruise your head, you're going to bruise his heel, but the seed of the woman is going to bruise your head. And that's what Paul is addressing. So we know that to be Christ, but then we know that we are the body of Christ, and are we not with Christ at a certain day when God is going to bruise him under our feet? We're going to be able to get revenge over the one who brought us and tempted us and deceived us to begin with. Amen. And I like that. I'm, I, some days I look for it. Can I hear you say amen? amen. Genesis chapter 6. I made this uh, mention of briefly last week 
that oftentimes in the Old Testament, when you find the word repent or any version of it, it is God doing the repenting. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean that God makes a mistake? No. But God is showing us an example of what repentance is. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil 